Okay. Um, what are your own personal or political ambitions in terms of um, standing for council? Some of you obviously are, but becoming MEPs or MPs. Um, and also, how do you go about supporting um, other candidates for doing the same sort of thing? Thank you. And uh, this time we can go in reverse <coughs> order. Um, oh, sorry. Um, okay, well, I'm the only lead candidate who's actually held a public elected office. Uh, and that, that's obviously not anything to do with the amount of hard work that's gone in. But I've been in a target to win campaign that's been successful, and I've held elected office in the council. Uh, and my daughter actually asked me the other day whether I'd consider standing again. Uh, to be honest, I think I would rather accelerate and get into Westminster and help to get a bit more done. But I don't have direct ambitions to do that now. I think the skills that I've got and the networks that I have built, I'm probably better off doing something like I'm doing at the moment, which has been reaching out uh, and talking with the trade unions who are on board with the Coalition of Resistance, who I've worked with with the Campaign Against Climate Change trade union group, and I would like to, as leader of the Green Party, make sure that our contacts and our networks throughout uh, the trade union movement and with other groups around the country uh, developed and gave us that up. Profile, and that way I would help to support other candidates standing in the Euro elections and for uh, wherever we think we can genuinely target for our next couple of Westminster seats while supporting Caroline. I've already got the Communist Party of Britain saying they're going to come down and help fight, so that's 300 extra canvases already. So I would um, uh, definitely do all that I could. I'm known as a rabble rouser, but in actual fact, probably my most um, important work that I've ever done has been in very small, damp basements where I've done tough negotiating and helped to find areas of agreement from people from a wide range of organisations and to get them working together. So I would do all of those things. Thank you. Okay. Um, my personal political ambitions over the next two years I would see us really significantly grow the number of green councillors around the country and to get at least six, six MEPs elected in 2014. <coughs> um, that would take, at the highest level swing, 1.3% in the eastern region. But we've got, we go from the very close last time northwest, 0.3%, through the southwest, through Yorkshire and Humber, up to eastern. Now, if we could get six MEPs in two years' time, that would mean we would treble our representation in Europe, and that would really notice something. So in terms of the next two years, that's my personal ambition, and that's why I'm standing to do that. And I think, you know, by standing without being a person who has an immediate political goal on the horizon, it means I can spread my time, spread my energy, spread the attention the leader will bring around the country into different places and make sure we win the maximum number of European seats. In terms of the longer term, um, I was number four on the London Assembly list just this May, and I certainly, you know, who knows, but in four years' time, I'm certainly looking at the London elections. And I'd very much like to be an MP eventually, but uh, we're going to have to see whether the, whether the, uh, what happens with the redrawing of seats uh, before anyone can be very certain about what their, uh, where they're, exactly where their electoral ambitions lie in terms of Westminster. But for the next two years, the whole country, and I'd like to see us with six MEPs and a lot more councillors. Thank you. Okay. As you all know, the next two years are critical for the Green Party. First of all, we're moving from a very successful leader who's become an MP um, to a leader who is not an MP. We are facing the cuts, we're facing climate change, we're facing society in um, a near breakdown position all within the next two years. My ambition, if you can call it ambition, is for the Green Party as a whole to grow, to become more than a political party, to become a movement that attracts people to it by the strength of our argument for these three main concerns of climate, economy and society. So I don't have an ambition for myself. I will stand for council, I have done. I will stand for Westminster, I have done. I will stand for Wales uh, Assembly, I have done. 
and I've worked my socks off and believe me, I know what it is to fall down exhausted the day of the election because you could never deliver another leaflet no matter what they paid you. But that's not my personal ambition. My ambition is for the party. I so badly feel that our message is perfect for the time. This is our time and we have to grab that agenda and make it our own. Um, I'll take you back to 2008 when we'd uh, had the constitutional change that said instead of having principal speakers we can have two co-leaders or we can have a leader or deputy. And I had quite a lot of people at the time say to me, stand for deputy, stand for deputy. And I said, no, I think actually what we need to communicate now as a party is that we are a credible party. We're a party with elected representative. We're a party that can elect people at all levels. So Caroline was the obvious candidate for leader, and I think everyone saw that. But Adrian Ramsey, as leader of the opposition on Norwich City Council, was the obvious candidate for deputy for me. And I actually said to Adrian, I will manage your campaign. I will be your campaign manager because I think you are the right person there because it gives us electoral credibility and electoral focus. So at that time, the general, going from 2008 through to the general election in 2010, Caroline Lucas is our most likely prospect to become an MP. Adrian Ramsey is our second most likely prospect to become an MP. It was the right message to communicate to the media. We have to communicate with a serious party that's going to elect more and more people at different levels. And I stood for the North West uh, as lead candidate in the European elections in 2009. Nick Griffin beat me by 0.3%. What that works out as is five votes per ward in the North West. So if in every ward we got five votes more, we could have beaten the BNP. So that was my motivation, was to beat Ben Griffin, was to keep that racist out of the European Parliament. This time round, I want Nick Griffin to go. But more than just that, we need a step change, a leap forward as a party. And having seen the European election, having been comprehensively involved last time in 2014, I think I'm the right person to lead us into that election. 